Well, it's a sad day in Mudville. The mighty Fedor has struck out. Ah, I'm so sad and so disappointed by that. The uh, For any of you people who don't know who Fedor is, and if you don't, then you're a buffoonowitz, Fedor Emelianenko is the greatest MMA heavyweight in the history of the sport and the greatest MMA superstar of all time. And um, he just lost his second defeat in, uh, in his career after having like 30 wins and like uh, two losses. And it's very sad because uh, he, um, it's just sad. You know, I didn't want to see him lose. I hate seeing him lose. I liked when he was undefeated. And then, see, I didn't watch his last match, which is probably why he lost that one, because I did not see it. And as a loyal fan, I felt like I betrayed him by not watching his last match. And Fabricio Verdun uh, made him tap out. And then coming off that loss, he had to go against this big acromegaliac bastard, uh, the giant foot, big foot, um, super foot, um, mighty foot, mighty foot Joe Young. No, uh, mighty foot Silva, big foot Silva. Um, and uh, the guy, um, it's just, it's... Uh, it's the wrong opponent. I mean, he really, it's, it, there's a big tournament. And uh, so there was a first round matchup. And it's really the wrong match, unfortunately, for Fedor to come back from. Because it's his first loss really ever um, in MMA. And um, and you come back from that fighting a guy 50 pounds heavier than you. And, and that's just the wrong kind of opponent. I mean, he really got the worst. And in the, in the way they bracketed it, he couldn't have been put in a worse situation. Um, because even though the guy, the weight limit is uh, 265 and Fedor weighs 230, um, you know, after you weigh in, you weigh in at 265, but then the guy put the, you know, the weight he cut, he puts back on. So now he comes in at 280, 285. So he's 50, 55 pounds heavier than Fedor. And it's just way too much. But Fedor still would have won. See, but the problem was is they stopped the fight. Oh, before I go any further, I'm not going to talk exclusively about MMA and Fedor Emelianenko, although I really think I should, but I won't because there may be some non-MMA fans out there. And if there are non-MMA fans, then, uh, um, but, uh, so anyway, at the end of the second round, he put the, uh, the giant Bigfoot, put the knee bar on Fedor, who countered by putting an ankle lock on, and the big man went, no, 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 but see, he only did that because it really hurts, it's kind of like when a guy gets stung or gets his jaw rocked, he's like, no, nah, I'm not hurt, I'm not hurt, of course you're hurt, that's just a big scam, plus, when he went back to his corner, he was limping, and then after he left his corner, after the fight was called, he was limping all over the place. So, of course, his ankle was all screwed up. Fedor would have, if they wouldn't have stopped the fight between rounds, Fedor would have went back out there, and also the big man was sucking wind. Fedor would have went back out there, grabbed, picked his ankle, and put him in another ankle lock, and it would have been over. And uh, that's, what, that's the way I see it. And what they should have done was just like in the Rocky movie. They should have cut Fedor. He should have said, cut me, Mick. Well, unless the guy's name wasn't Mick. And it probably wasn't because... I don't think Russians or, you know, the name Mick is really a Russian name. You know, I don't think you'd be, if you were Russian, well, if you were in a hurry to name somebody, you might say Mick, but I don't think, uh, you know, whatever. The, um, be that as it may. Um, but he should have said, cut me, Mick, or whoever. And then he could have cut his eyeball right below or right above so that the blood, all the swelling, the blood would have poured out. And then, and then he could have put the, the, the press thing on there, um, and then the blood would have stopped because uh, they could have got the blood to stop flowing, but they had to get the blood out of the way because it was the swelling because his eye was all swelled up like that. So if they went like that and let the blood out, the swelling would have loosened up and then he could have saw, could have seen, saw, sore. Depends where you're from. He could have seen it if he was from Philly. He could have saw it if he's from New York because they like to put R's on the end of words that don't really have R's on the end of words. I, I don't know why, nor do I care. Um... But anyway, so Fedor lost, and then he threatened to retire. Um, well, not he really threatened. It's not like he was going to like, hey, I'm going to beat you up if you don't let me retire. But, you know, he said, I may retire. But I think my wife has informed me that he said he's not going to retire now, which I don't think he should. I, I think the whole problem was he, for about five years, he took like one fight, two fights, red fight, blue fight, green fish, red fish, blue fish, red fish. No, uh, I fell into my Dr. Seuss world. Um the, uh, my doggy likes Dr. Seuss. Uh, in fact, that's his veterinarian's name, Dr. Seuss. And I want to mention that my doggy's elbows are not getting any better, and I'm very sad about that. Very sad. It's a sad, there's a double sad day in Mudville. But he's a trooper, my doggy. Um, so anyway, um, Fedora didn't fight for like five years, and, uh, you know, like one fight. 
because of the management thing or whatever, because they wanted to control everything. And you can't go five years without fighting, even if you are the greatest fighter in the world. And see, I followed Fedor from the very beginning of his career. I mean, from when he first started in Pride, and I said this guy's the greatest fighter ever, and I meant it, and it's true. So there. Um, what else did I want to talk about? The um, Oh, scratch-offs. More of my fans are bringing me scratch-offs to all my matches, and I want to thank you. Keep bringing the scratch-offs. Uh, now, I do want to point out that if I hit any big, big money, I will be uh, splitting it with the, uh, with the person who brings them to me. So uh, make sure you um, put your name on the back of them just in case. So if we hit the big winnings, then we will split it. And by big winnings, I mean it has to be a winning where you have to go in and cash it yourself. Um, you know, underneath that, I'll be putting that towards uh, myself, towards my back pocket. Um, and maybe some towards my doggy. Um, the, uh, oh, I like this. Let me point this out. This is another doggy. This made me think of my doggy right here. Look, it says, this was for my in-laws. It's a keychain. I don't know why they gave it to me, but listen. Okay, and that's extremely weird. Um, I like it nonetheless. Yes, nonetheless, I like it. My dog, he doesn't like it quite so much. But uh, right now, he's hidden underneath my feet because the dryer's on. He doesn't like the dryer or the washer. He's very scared of the dryer and the washer. My dog's a little bit timid because he was a bait dog when we first got him, which is bullshit. Uh, fucking assholes like Scott Vick um, who fucking uh, train dogs to kill each other and stuff. Fucking idiot. What, sweetie? Michael Vick, Scott Vick. Oh, Scott Vick, he was sick boy. What am I saying? Man, he's a nice guy. He would never do that to a dog. But um, Or the Vicks brothers who make cough suppressants. They're nice guys too from what I understand. Although I heard the Smith brothers are Nazis. And they used to have a big war between the Smith brothers and the Vick brothers over the brothers of cough uh, drops. I don't know. I made that up. Um, I'd like to show this gift. I like gifts, as you know, because um, I'm shameless. Because I'm shameless, and I can't sing either. Well, sort of. You know, I may be recording an album someday. Um, I'll tell you about that in a second. Look at this. Is that an amazing picture? I have to keep myself in frame. Look. Ooh, there's me. Anyway, is that, is that great, though? My buddy Mike Messier, who's uh, going to be shooting a movie at some point, uh, if we ever get around to it, Mike, um, and uh, that I'll be starring in. It's uh, Wrestling with Sanity. Uh, sounds apropos for me. And I love I love this uh, this uh, artwork. I, he got one of his buddies to make it for me. Is it like a late holiday present? And uh, I love the use of negative space. And uh, I just think it's uh, it's awesome. I think it's called negative space. Mike Mignola's art, uh, similar kind. Alex Toth. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. So that'll go back here. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, I'm in my underwear. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, I was actually gonna do this one naked and see if anyone noticed, but the wife talked me out of it. So that was me in my underwear because I'm too lazy to actually put on any pants when I do these things. And uh, now you can't see the thing, can you? Oh, there it is. I'm actually going to put it in a better spot when I rearrange that whole cabinet with all kinds of crap on it. Because, see, my wife had all her Catwoman stuff and a bunch of other crap all over there. I, like, I don't even know what that thing is. Um, that thing in the right hand. I'm, yeah, I'm pointing at it with my, with my cursor like you can see the cursor. Where's my finger at? Oh, there it is. Uh, that thing in the corner. Uh, hold on. That. Hey, what the hell is that? Absolutely no idea. Um, absolutely no idea. Um, but it's leftover crap from that she had there, and then I decided that with my desk here that she would have to move her crap, and we haven't got around to it, because, uh, whatever. A lot of other stuff going on. Um, the, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, oh. Uh, where's my notes? I have some notes here. Um, Cauliflower Alley Club. I want to talk about that for a second. Um, I like making paper noises like this. Cauliflower Alley Club. Um, I'll be going there. Anybody in Vegas who wants to see me can come to the Cauliflower Alley Convention uh, in March 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, it's going to be huge. It's going to be big. It's going to be like all kinds of old-time wrestlers. And uh, all kinds of fans there as well. The night before, on Sunday the 17th, I'll be uh, in a Royal Rumble type match for uh, a promotion there, which I don't know the name of the promotion yet, but I'll get that. 
Um, the 18th, this is really interesting because um, the promotion FSW, um, they are going to do an event. And, uh, and um, at the event, they're going to have a, first of all, we're going to have, all right, let me backtrack here because I'm trying to read this off the sheet and I don't really write it down too good because sometimes I can't even read my own handwriting. Do you ever have that problem? Yeah, I do too. Well, I just said that. Okay, so what we're going to do is for the, uh, for the you know, because I always have these seminars. When I go to shows, I have seminars and I teach wrestlers how to, you know, how to improve their game, um, you know, and for a low, low fee of like 35 bucks a head, um, I'll do that usually. And sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, depending on, you know, where it's at. But, um, but I want to, I thought to myself, I've never opened a seminar up to the, to the fans, you know. And I think the fans would find it really intriguing. I, obviously, they comment all the time on my wrestling, uh, my, um, the, uh, the DVDs I do, the uh, Ring Psychology DVDs and stuff like that I did for Ring of Honor and stuff like that. Man, I just said in stuff like that like five times for some reason. And stuff like that. And stuff like that there. Um, anyway, so I figured I'd open it up to the fans. And uh, even though I'm charging the wrestlers 35 I got to charge the fans a little more because, you know, it's not fair to the wrestlers then. But the fans, I wanted to make sure they got their money's worth. So any fan that wants to come, because there's going to be a show that night too, which I may or may not get involved in. But if they want to come to the seminar, it'll be $65. Um, and it'll include your admission to the show. So right off the bat, you're getting a deal, a hell of a deal. It also is going to include a first or second row seat, depending on if, you know, the first row seats get taken up by these people buying these seats. Then you have to be in the second row or finally in the third row, if, you know, if we have that many in the attendance. Um, I'm also going to throw in a free autographed 8x10 picture of myself. Plus, you can sit in on a two-hour seminar, ask any question you want. You'll be there just like everybody else, like the other wrestlers, learning um, and breathing in, breathing in the atmosphere of Raven. It's very, um, very informative. It's very luxurious, and, uh, and it's very caressing to the soul. I'm not sure if that means anything. For more info, go to www.futurestarsofwrestling.com. To purchase seminar tickets, go to www. Even event, I can't read this, eventbrite.com, but bright is spelled B-R-I-T-E, not B-R-I-G-H-T. So it's eventbrite, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E.com. Now, also going to be there will be Nick Bockwinkle, who's a, a legend of the sport. I mean, an absolute legend. Uh, Raven, that, that would be me. Sin Bodai, Kazarni, uh, and the cat Stacy Carter, very good friends of mine. A little shout out to the cat Stacy Carter and Sin Bodai. Um, the, uh, like, I like them. Very, very nice people. Very nice people. Um, and good workers too. Um, so that's going to be Cauliflower Alley weekend, uh, or during Cauliflower week. It's during the week. Um, well, that'll be a Monday. But the reason the Cauliflower Alley's during the week is because they found that wrestlers couldn't make it because, you know, they were working on the weekend. So how are you going to, you know, how are you going to do that? But I told them they should make it on like Thursday, uh, like Wednesday and Thursday. Because everybody has like TV tapings on like Monday and Tuesday. So still wrestlers can't make it. So it's like, I don't know. Nobody listens to me. I'm a genius. Why don't they listen to me? You know why? That's why. All right. Um, I'm also going to be in Cleveland this weekend. Sunday. Shut up. Shut up. Thank you. Sunday, I'm going to be in Cleveland for Pro Wrestling Ohio. Look that up. I'm not sure where I'm going to be for them, but I'm going to be there for them. So if you want to see me this weekend in Cleveland on Sunday, uh, Pro Wrestling Ohio. I'm sure they have a website, prowrestlingohio.com. Um, then the following weekend, I'm going to take the weekend off. Uh, feel free to, whenever you come see me in person, bring me uh, scratch-offs. I love scratch-offs. Um, it's a skill game, as i pointed out many a time, and I'm usually always victorious, except when I'm not. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, so there we go. Hocus smokes, kingfish. Uh, that's enough of that nonsense. Okay, time to find the off switch. Where is the off switch? I don't know. Please tell me. I do not know. You must find it. I don't know what that is. I, 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 I.